Welcome to Latin at Wittenberg Academy, and not just Latin, but Wheelock's Latin, this book. The uh, seventh edition of Wheelock's Latin will be our book. And this introductory video is to talk a bit ho about how we'll use this book. Because Wheelock's Latin is an excellent textbook. It is really the, the standard textbook in high school and college level introduction to Latin grammar courses. Um, and uh, one reason that Wheelock's Latin, though, can be a bit intimidating is the chapters are very long. There's a whole lot in each chapter. And for an introduction to Latin at the grammar school level, uh, which a lot of our students here at Wittenberg, most of our students begin Latin kind of in the junior high level, the book can be very intimidating. There's, there's just really too much in it. Uh, we have another entire course of Latin uh, here at Wittenberg that uses a different book that was originally written kind of for the, the junior high grammar school level, and that's another full course. Many of our students have requested to use Wheelock's Latin simply because that's what a lot of colleges use, what, what a lot of high schools use, and uh, there's just a, there's a desire to have this kind of be part of our system. Now I teach Wheelock's Latin at the college level, and even at the college level, I don't use everything in the book. There is just too much. It's overwhelming for the typical three hour course. That is, uh, in college, uh, courses are determined by their you know, your level of involvement. How many times a week are you going to class? What's the expectation for how much time during the rest of your week you're going to spend on homework? And so the typical three-hour class meets for three hours a week. Uh, you meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you would have a corresponding amount of homework. When I took Wheelock's Latin as an undergraduate, I took it as a five-hour course. We met five days a week, and uh, we used most of the book. Now, most undergraduate courses, even at the collegiate level, simply do not spend that much time. Um, so even at, at that level, you're not going to use everything in the book. So uh, what we want, and as you can see here when you, when you pick this up from Amazon or wherever, um, you know, let's just pick, uh, just take a look at chapter 8 here. Um, well, it doesn't have much of chapter 8 in here in, a, in this version. Um, but you know the, the chapters are just very long. Not only do you have an introduction to grammar, uh, but then you get long discussions of sometimes Latin history, tons and tons of available translations. So if you've picked up this book and you looked at it and were intimidated, don't worry. Here's what we're going to do with Wheelock's Latin. Our focus on, on introduction to Latin is on these four things. You're going to learn Latin vocabulary. You're going to get very acquainted with not only Latin grammar, but with the grammar of your own language. You're going to get acquainted with English grammar. You're going to learn grammatical concepts. Now, you, you may know many of them already, but you'll learn them much more deeply by learning Latin. And you're going to learn paradigm forms. Uh, a paradigm is a pattern. And so in English, for example, here's a paradigm form in English. Uh, I see... Uh, you see, he sees, we see, y'all, the you plural, uh, you plural, y'all see, and they see. So in English, we only have a little bit of what's called inflection. Only this form changes. Only the third person singular form of the verb changes. Um, but you need to know that. You don't, you, you don't say he see. He see the dog. That's bad grammar. Well, Latin has a, a, a many more of these changes, many more of these inflections. And so their paradigm forms are numerous. And this is a huge part of this third step here, just a huge part of what you'll be doing when you learn Latin. You'll be learning these paradigm forms, verb forms, noun forms, adjective forms, etc. And then we're also going to work on a fundamental translation method that you are going to learn very, very well. So you're going to learn vocabulary, you're going to learn grammar, you're going to learn uh, to recognize and reproduce the paradigm forms, and you're going to learn how to translate Latin. 
and you're going to learn it in such a way that you're going to that when you are when we're done with what we do in Wheelox Latin, you are going to be ready to move into a readings course and uh, begin to read unabridged Latin. Now, each one of our video lessons includes, therefore, a discussion of the grammatical topic. You know, I'll walk you through the material in Wheelock. But, you know, I'm going to expect you to read through the chapter on your own. We're not going to sit together in this video. I'm not going to read you paragraph by paragraph what Wheelock says. You should read his explanations. I'm going to discuss the grammar. I'm going to make it easier to understand. I'm going to explain to you in a much more condensed way, what Wheelock often spends a long time talking about. This is another thing that people find intimidating about Wheelock when they try to use it for self-study. Um, you know, what exactly did he mean by this very long, two paragraph long explanation? Oftentimes it can be boiled down much more simply. That's what I'm going to do for you as your instructor. Um, I'll give you an introduction to the paradigm forms, walk you through them. Um, and then we'll go through a specific number of translation exercises. So, for example, here I'll open up my copy kind of randomly to chapter 20. And in chapter 20, there are 12 uh, exercise sentences to translate. And then there are 13 more um, direct quotations from Latin literature. And then there's another paragraph. We're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two or three sentences that are going to teach you, help you learn the material in that week's lesson. And then, I, and then you are going to go through the very specific translation method that I'm going to teach you here after a couple lessons. And you're going to do that work. And then you'll go back to the video and get your work corrected. And then those two or three sentences, aspects of those sentences, will be on the quiz that we'll have at the end of each week. And, and this is what our week looks like. So on day one, you're going to watch the video, and then you're going to make your flashcards for all the paradigm forms and vocabulary from that week's chapter. In the beginning lessons, I'll walk you through the vocabulary even, you know, very closely. As we move through the course and you get, you get better at this, you're not going to need me to read to you the vocabulary. You're going to know how to make those flashcards on your own. Um, and then on days two and three, so you, on a usual week, that'll be Tuesday and Wednesday, you'll want to study your flashcards. And if needed, if you don't understand some of the grammar topics, either review the video and or log into our weekly chat, which is usually on Wednesdays. That's usually when I schedule mine, um, if you have any questions. And if for whatever reason you can't make our weekly Latin chat, just email me any questions you have. Most of my students don't log into our weekly chat. The video lesson and the textbook make clear the grammar that we're to learn. Uh, but if you do have any questions, do log in. Each week I have a, a few students who do log in. So if you have a specific question, if you're having trouble, you didn't understand a translation, you're stuck on a grammar topic, log in to the weekly chat or send me an email and we will get all your questions answered. Then, either on day three or four, so again, that's most weeks, Wednesday or Thursday, then you need to work on your assigned translations obviously before watching the portion of the video that gives the answers to the translations. You want to really spend time working on that translation. I tell people at least 15 to 30 minutes per sentence. Um, you need to work on that and really try to work it out yourself according to the step-by-step -step method that we'll be discussing in a future video. Then watch the corrections and study the information from the corrected translations. Now, for those students who want more exercises, this is a great thing about Wheelock's Latin. If you want to do more work than that, more study work, it'll certainly benefit you. And there are self-study tutorial exercises in Wheelock. They begin on page 412. 
and then there they have uh, the answers are in the book so if you want to do more exercises they're right here in Wheelock's Latin you will certainly be benefited by doing them however again this is one of those things in Wheelock's Latin it, it is overwhelming there's so much if you did everything in a chapter of Wheelock's Latin there's no way you could learn Latin grammar over the course of four quarters, which is, which is our goal, that you would get through this entire book over the course of four quarters and be ready to read unabridged Latin. Now, if you spend a little time in the additional exercises, you'll learn Latin better, you'll learn it more thoroughly, you'll do better on the quizzes that I give you at the end of each week. Obviously, the more time you can put in, the better you will do. However, if you just stick with my plan here for these four days, that you're studying the vocabulary and paradigm forms, and you're working, on, you're working hard on just the translations I assign, and then study for that quiz, study all those things, study the translations that I gave you, study the vocabulary, study the paradigms, and then you take these quizzes, A, you're going to do well on the quizzes, and B, at the end of your time through Wheelock's Latin, at the end of that fourth term, you will know Latin. You will be ready to read unabridged Latin. You'll be ready for our, our reading course, our first reading course. will take you into Julius Caesar's uh, Gallic Wars. You'll be ready for that. Um, the, I've taught kids, like I said, at both the high school and the collegiate level, this program that I've set up works, and it works very well. Uh, but if you want to dig in and do more, you will certainly be benefited by using uh, the, the self-study exercises on page 412 and following. So that's our introduction to Wheelock's Latin. That's how we'll step through this week by week stay on top of this uh, schedule. Now, inevitably, sometimes people do fall behind. If you fall behind, don't worry. We have 10 chapters of Wheelock's Latin we're gonna go through over each 12-week term. So there are two weeks built in to each uh, trimester at the midterm and at the final where there'll be no new lessons. So there are two weeks built in where you can kind of catch up, but I strongly encourage you, strongly encourage you to, to keep up with this each week. So during week one, when chapter one is assigned, get through chapter one in week one. You'll be much happier. Uh, but if you do fall behind, there, first of all, there are two weeks built in for you to catch up. And second of all, at Wittenberg, we, you always have the option to spread one course over two or more trimesters if that's what you want to do. And, and if you find that's what you need to do, email me. I'll put you in touch with the right people to make that happen. So there's our introduction to Wheelock's Latin. Uh, so if you've not yet purchased this book, do so. Make sure it's the seventh edition uh, and then we'll be ready to get right into Latin.